All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about this green toroid that I have here and how I have it configured in a four to one unun. So in particular, this is a voltage unun. And let's talk about it. So what we've used is an 18 gauge enamel uh, coated copper wire. And then if you count on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we have eight turns on here. And what we've done is, is that we've taken the inner windings and we scraped the enamel off. You have to do that with a Dremel or something like that to make it easy. And we've connected the two points here together. And what this uh, connector does here is it simulates a coaxial cable. And so you can see that our center tap for this toroid goes into the positive. So that would go into the center conductor of our coaxial cable. And then this outer winding is directly connected to the shield or a ground. Now, when we use this in an antenna, we would connect a counterpoise to this, or maybe we're using an off-center fed dipole, but our ground leg would come off of here, off of the shield side. So we would tap that and then connect our, connect our um, counterpoise. At PCBWay.com, you can take advantage of online injection molding services. If you go to their website, you can see just how injection molding works. You'll learn about the basics. You'll learn how it works. You'll learn the features of their injection molding service itself. You'll learn about the process and even injection molding materials. And rest assured, their services are tried and true. They're used by every industry on the planet. Now on this side, this would be our antenna that we have. And so what I'm gonna do with this is make a kind of an end-fed type antenna. So I'm gonna have a wire coming off of here that's gonna be about 25 feet long, and that's gonna be my element. And then off of this connection, I'll have a tap here that goes to my counterpoise. Um, and actually, instead of a counterpoise, what I'm gonna use is a ground plane because this is gonna be a vertical antenna. But I wanted to test this to make sure that if I had a 200 ohm load on here, that it would transform down. And the way four to one works is, is that on the coaxial cable side, you have 50 ohms and it would be 200 ohms here. And that's about the target ratio that I'm looking for. Let's take a look at the schematic for this and talk about it a little bit more so you have a little bit better understanding. And being honest, maybe talking through this will give me a little bit of a better understanding. So. Here's the schematic, and what we have here is our coaxial cable. And you can see that the shield of this goes down to ground, and the shield is also connected through to what we were calling our ground here. So this is where that would be tapped off of. Now you can see that our center tap here, which is represented right here, goes into the center conductor of our coaxial cable, and this would be our antenna element. So there's a couple of things that, uh, that we wanna talk about. So on this side, we have something called impedance and Z equals impedance. And on our source or our primary side, I should say, we're gonna call that Z primary, which means our impedance on our primary side, that is equal to 50 ohms. And that's because our radio has a 50 ohm impedance and our coaxial cable has a 50 ohm impedance. So what I wanna do now is I wanna talk a little bit about the primary and secondary. So this is eight wraps and it's two wires. So that equals a total of 16. So my primary winding would be this winding right here. So we've got primary and my handwriting is terrible. So you're going to just have to deal with it. And we have eight windings. Our secondary winding is the entire thing. So we take a look at our secondary, that would mean 16 windings in total. Now, when we do this, there's a couple of things we want to figure out. So there's something called turns ratio. And in this case, we're going to use the letter N to depict our turns ratio. So when we take a look at how to calculate this, what you do is N equals your turns ratio on your secondary, so that's NS, divided by your turns ratio on your primary. So that would be equal to 16 divided by eight. And when you do that math, you get the magic number two. So in this case, our turns ratio N equals two. And stick with me, I know this is boring and you're probably uh, thinking about uh, jumping off a building or something like that. 
So when we have this, what we want to figure out is what our impedance on the secondary is going to be equal to. And that's how you calculate how your toroid is going to perform. So there's a formula for that, and that is impedance on the secondary is equal to the square root of your turns ratio times the primary impedance ZP. So what we know is that the impedance for our secondary is equal to 2 squared, right? Because it's our turn ratio is 2, so it's 2 squared times 50 ohms, right? Because we know that our primary impedance is 50 ohms. So our primary, I'm sorry, our, our secondary impedance is 4 times 50, which is equal to 200 ohms. So that's how you figure out what your ratio is going to be good for and what your windings and how that calculates up and what kind of transformation you're going to get on something like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect this to an NOVNA and test that. And in order to test that, what I have here in series are two 100 ohm resistors giving us a 200 ohm load. So when I feed my NOVNA in here, I should see a close to one to one SWR. So let's set up for that. Okay, so what we're going to do here, pretty simple setup, is, is that we have our toroid connected to some transmission line, and the transmission line comes down here into our nano VNA, and our nano VNA will squirt a signal out this channel zero. Now, a portion of that is going to be reflected back. It's called a reflection coefficient, and the nano VNA will work its magic and calculate our SWR. And if we're close to one to one, then our transformation ratio of this core is working as designed. Okay, so what you can see here is the sweep that we've done. And when we take a look at our results, this green line here represents our SWR all the way from 6.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz. And so here in the seven megahertz or the 40 meter band, we have a SWR of about 1.3 to one. And then we drop down here to the 20, we're at 1.2. And then when we drop down here to 21 megahertz, we are at 1.16, and then down here at 10 megahertz, we are 1.145. So we're going to call that close enough, and uh, from an SWR standpoint, this looks pretty good. So what we have now is I have these connected back-to-back -back like this. So these are two of the uh, ununs, and what we're going to do is we're going to shoot a signal out of channel zero in through, and it's going to get processed through both of these uh, toroids. And it's going to come back in here, and then the nano VNA will compare the it, it, the squirted signal, I guess is the best way to say it, to the received signal, and that will give us a loss measurement. And then we can determine core efficiency or how much of our signal gets lost in a particular core. Now, the reading that we get, because we have two cores, we have to divide that by two, and we'll take one half of our reading to determine our efficiency. So here you can see our sweep from 6.5 megahertz all the way through 55 megahertz because I wanted to include the six meter band. And what we're doing here, you can see at the top, is this is an S21 gain. And I just explained that when I showed the nano VNA. And we have a measurement here uh, at our lowest. You can see down here our S21 is negative 1.486. So if you divide that in half, it's like 0 0.743 which is about 85% efficient. And that particular reading is right here at about 39 megahertz, which uh, is outside the ham bands. So we're looking at a core that's about 85% efficient during its effective impedance transformation of four to one. So we feel pretty good about it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, uh, I'd love to hear them below. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. It's greatly appreciated.